Hey guys, it's your pal Dave from notesandbolts.com and I'm back with a new project for you to try. So during my live streams, I use something called a Roland VT4 voice transformer. And it's a cool little box that lets you change your voice into all sorts of silly characters and then change it back to normal. So I needed a remote control to make this easy to do from anywhere in the room. And unfortunately, the VT4 doesn't have any built-in foot switch support or anything like that, but it does have a MIDI port. And if something has a MIDI port, we can control it. So let's take a look at what I came up with. But first, let me take a minute and thank the sponsors of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all your circuit board and manufacturing needs. They can do circuit boards, multi-layer boards, aluminum boards, 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and assembly. They can do it all. PCBWay is very maker-friendly with lots of services for small creators like myself. So check out PCBWay today and they can make your dream project a reality. Click the link in the video description to let them know that Dave sent you and you'll get yourself some free goodies. So thanks again to PCBWay. All right, so this is what I came up with. I, it's such a weird project, I don't even have a name for it, but I guess I'll call it the VT4 remote. What I needed for this box is I needed an easy way to toggle the effect on and off. So that's what this arcade button is for. When I press it, the effect is on. When I release it, the effect is off. And that way I can easily have like a weird little conversation with myself if I need to. I also needed a way to select the four presets that the VT4 has. And I thought of a lot of different ways to do it, like toggle switches, LEDs to show me which one is active. But then I thought, hey, how about a rotary switch? It does a selection and also indicates which selection is on at the same time. That's very good. And what I found is if you get one of these, this is a fan control. And if you think of a fan, it has four settings, off, low, medium, and high. So even though this is actually a three position rotary switch, the off position can be my fourth selection. So basically one, two, three, and off would be four. Now I also needed a way to trigger this remotely. So these inputs here, these are quarter inch mono jacks, and they're wired in parallel with the button. So if I push this, or if I close one of these, it's all the same. It's going to activate the same input. And of course I have my power jack and the MIDI jack to go to the VT4. So if we power it up, this is a nine volt adapter. So I wanted the light to be on when it's muted. So it's kind of works as a power light as well. And then when I press it, it's gonna go off to show that the effect is on. I know that might be a little backwards, but it's kind of exactly what I needed it to do. Like I said, I also needed a remote switch. What I found was this. This is something called a remote starter. And this is for automotive, and you can find these on Amazon, but basically it's a normally open switch that you would connect between your car's battery and the starter motor. Normally they come with these uh, battery clips, alligator clips on them, but I thought um, I'm just gonna put a female quarter inch jack on the end, and that way I can use just a standard guitar cable of any length to connect them. So I put one side in here, the other side will go into one of my quarter inch jacks and when I press the trigger, it basically does the same thing as pushing the button. Now you may be wondering what these odd symbols are and these are just little pictures that remind me of what each setting does. So this first setting here, the notes and volts setting, is just kind of a lower announcer voice I use. It sounds like this, kind of a deeper version of my voice. This one is kind of a deeper demon voice. Hello, I'm a demon, isn't this terrifying? Sure is. This one here is kind of a simulated telephone. Hello, I'm calling in, is anyone there? And finally, this is kind of a stupid robot voice that I sometimes use for a character. Uh, it sounds kind of like this. Hello, hello. Oh, hey Nabbot, how you doing? Yeah, it's Nabbot. I'm watching what you're doing and I don't get it. I, I, I don't understand, don't get what? Like, who is this video for? You're making a box that controls another box. 
yes, that's technically true. That's interesting to you and maybe like one other person. No, no, but I think there's a, a bigger audience for this. There's people who want to learn how the design process works and you could always take this and modify it into something else if you like. Okay, yeah, you know best. I only live in the internet as a bot. Good luck with your video. Now, let's talk about the circuit. I'm basing this design on an Adafruit Perma Proto board, but you could really use any prototyping board you want. The brains, the heart, and the soul of this project is a 5 volt Arduino Nano. To power it, I'm going to connect a 9 volt DC adapter to this power jack. The positive side of the jack will go to VN and the ground pin will go to GND, which is ground. The Arduino will then use its built-in regulator to cut that 9 volts down to 5 volts and make it available at the 5 volt pin. We'll take the 5 volts from that pin and run it through a wire to a 220 ohm resistor. We'll then connect the other side of that resistor to pin 4 on the MIDI jack. We'll connect a second 220 ohm resistor to the transmit pin on the Arduino labeled TX. We'll take the other side of that resistor and run it to pin 5 on the MIDI jack. I need to ground the middle pin of the jack, so I'm going to run it to this ground strip on the board. Notice the ground strip is connected to the Arduino through this piece of wire. Next we need to deal with the rotary switch. I'm going to take the three terminals and run one to D2, second to D3, and the third to D4. The ground pin, I'm just going to run it to the ground strip. Now let's connect our quarter inch jacks. I'm going to connect the two shield pins together and then run one wire to the ground strip on our board. Then I'll take the two tip pins and connect them together and run a wire to D11 on the Arduino. Now I'll take the arcade button, run one side to ground and the other side to D11. I'm not using any resistors for any of these switches or buttons because we're going to use the internal resistors on the Arduino. Now we just need to hook up the LED and the arcade button. The LED will have two sides, a positive and a negative. The positive or anode side goes through a 220 ohm resistor to D12. The resistor is there to limit the current to the LED. If you want the LED to be dimmer, you can increase the value of this resistor, but I wouldn't decrease it because it may end up drawing too much current. Connect the negative side or cathode of the LED to the ground strip. And that's all there is to this circuit, it's very simple. The first thing we need to do is get the code onto the Arduino Nano. I'll include a link in the video description that will let you download the code. Open up the VT4 Remote Arduino Sketch. This is the MIDI channel. If you want to change the MIDI channel for any reason, just change this number here. Everything else you should probably leave alone. To upload this code to your Arduino, you're going to need two libraries, MIDI and Bounce2. To check if you have those libraries, go to Sketch, Include Library, and if you go down to Contributed Libraries, you should have Bounce2 and MIDI Library. If you don't have those two libraries, go to Manage Libraries. First, do a search for Bounce, and there's Bounce2. Just uh, click on it and click Install. Then do a search for MIDI library, and you'll have to scroll down a bit, go to the M's, and you will find MIDI library by Francois Best. Once again, just click on it and click install. Once you have your libraries installed, go to tools, make sure your board is set correctly. So if you go to AVR boards, make sure Arduino Nano is selected. If you find you're having trouble uploading, go to Processor and try the old bootloader option. When you connect your Arduino Nano, you'll be able to choose a port. Make sure your Arduino Nano shows up here. And once all that is ready, just click the Upload button. Before we start assembling this project, we need to drill some holes. I've included a handy drill template that you can cut out and paste right on the top of the box and it will show you the exact locations. Keep in mind that I've sized this drill chart for the parts that I'm using. The parts you get might be different sizes, so make sure you check them and figure out which hole is going to be required for each part. What I like to do is to take a drill gauge, which is this piece of metal, 
and take the part and actually try the different sizes of hole until I find one that fits. Once you've figured out the correct size on the gauge, you'll know the exact drill size you need. Now, one thing I like to use are these stepped drill bits. So they have a bunch of sizes and you can get them quite big. This is over an inch. And these are really good for big holes like this because you can gradually widen the hole. If I tried to drill a one inch hole directly with a one inch drill bit, it would be very, very tough to do. Now I'm ready to cut the template out and paste it on the box. You want to cut on the inside line of the template. Next, I'll grab some painter's tape and tape the templates down. Now we need to make some center punch marks to help guide our drill to the direct center of these holes. So I'm gonna use two tools for that. One is a automatic center punch, and the second is a needle. And I find by finding the center with the needle and making an indent in the paper, that's gonna guide my center punch, which is a little thicker, directly into the center of that cross. And then I can push down and make a dent in the metal and that's going to lock my drill bit in place when I'm drilling. And there you go, ready for drilling. So the next thing we have to do is design a label for our project and make it look real nice and professional. I design everything in Fusion 360. I work with an actual model of the box I'm using. I have some videos on how to do this. So what I'm really interested in is this top sketch. So if I open my sketch and I double click on it, you can see the actual sketch that I used. So I've got the outline of the box, my two holes, and this little dotted line actually shows me the diameter of the knob that will be on the box. And I can use this to accurately design my label. So once I've got my sketch done, go to that sketch, right click on it and save as DXF. I import that DXF file into Inkscape, which is a free graphics editing program. And that's gonna be the template for my design. The next thing I do is design my shape, the shape of the label I want, and I came up with this kind of shape. It's, uh, it's interesting. The next thing I'll do is add all the labels and the text, and these are just Windings font uh, from Windows, so pretty simple. And of course my logo because, you know, you gotta promote yourself. The next thing I'm gonna add is this layer here, and this is called a bleed. So I wanna cut around this perimeter of the black part here. So I've got my label designed and I can basically save it as an SVG file. The next thing I do is open up this program called Silhouette Studio. Now I use something called a Silhouette Cameo which is a arts and craft paper cutter and I use it to cut out my labels very precisely. Now this is kind of a luxury, you don't need this. You can use some scissors or an X-Acto knife and you'll get great results. But you know, I like to be fancy. So I import my design in. Silhouette Studio will add these registration marks on the paper. And this is going to allow the, the cutter to actually orient itself and figure out where my design is. When everything looks right, I print out the design on matte photo paper and stick it to the Silhouette cutting sheet. Then I'll just put it in the machine and let it do its work. And the end result should be a perfectly cut label. Now I just gotta carefully peel the label off the mat. Right now the label is just some flimsy photo paper which would probably get damaged pretty easily. So what I'm gonna do is make it strong by running it through an office laminator. 
Now that our label is strong, we got to make it sticky. So I'm going to use this product from 3M called 467 MP. It's a double sided sticky paper. It's real good. I'll cut out a piece just a little larger than the label and then peel off one side and stick it down. Now I'm going to use this roller tool to go over it and make sure it's all stuck down real nice. Now I'm going to cut out my label. I'm not going to cut right to the edge. I'm going to leave a bit of lamination so it doesn't come unstuck. Now we can stick the label to the box. This is super fun, but also a little scary because we only got one shot to get this right. To position it, I'm going to make a hinge out of masking tape and then use a light source, my phone in this case, put it under the box and I can see the holes project through the label. Then I can line it up and use my tape to make sure I can take the back off and put it down exactly in the right place. Finally, I'll cut out the holes with an X-Acto knife and we are done with this part. Now we're ready for assembly. So let's get to work. First thing I need to do is decide how I'm going to mount the circuit board to the project. I decided to mount it to the bottom plate of the enclosure with two 6mm standoffs with a male end and a female end. First, I'm going to use the circuit board as a template to mark the locations of the screw holes. Next, I'll use a center punch to mark the locations in the metal. So now the holes are drilled and I can do a little test fit. So I've got my two six millimeter standoffs, two screws for the bottom and two nuts for the top. And uh, let's put it all together and see how well I did. Look at that, perfect fit, nice job. Next, I'll solder three wires to the MIDI jack. Refer to the wiring diagram for their exact locations. Now I'll connect wires to the other jacks and buttons and switches. Once again, look at the wiring diagram to figure out where everything goes. Now we can concentrate on the actual circuit board. I've got my Adafruit Perma Proto and I'm going to solder the Arduino down using some header pins. I also need to install the three resistors and a couple of pieces of jumper wire. Now that all our components are ready, let's just put them all together. So first I'm going to install the MIDI jack using some three millimeter screws and nuts. Next I'll install the power jack and the two quarter inch jacks. If you refer to the wiring diagram, you'll notice that the two quarter inch jacks are actually wired in parallel and one set of wires is going to the board. The last step is to attach the rotary switch and the arcade button. Remember the arcade button also has a built in LED. So make sure you identify the switch contacts and the LED contacts. There will be four set of pins in total. This is my favorite part, finishing everything off. So I've installed the circuit board with the standoffs and now I'm just putting the four screws in the enclosure to seal it permanently. I'm gonna add some stick-on rubber feet to keep it from sliding around. And at last, the last step, we'll attach the big, beautiful rotary switch knob. And behold our beautiful creation. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, so professional. So thank you for watching the video. Dave got a little excited. He had to lie down, but he wanted me to stick around and thank all the fine folks on Patreon who supported this video. Hang on, let me put your names on the screen. Here we go. Yes, there you are. Oh, look at y'all. That is fantastic. So thank you all for helping Dave make these videos. I wouldn't do it personally, but you do, and that's fantastic. Dave will be back very soon with a new crazy project. I don't know what he's doing, but I'm sure it's going to be very exciting, so stay tuned. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.